Hi, welcome to another Flutter Flow tutorial. If you're just getting started with Superbase, one of the first thing you want to do is to authenticate your users. The reason why you authenticate your users is because you want them to be able to sign up and you want them to be able to sign in. There are several ways you could do this. You could authenticate users using Facebook, Apple, Google, or any other way. But today, I just want to show you briefly how you would authenticate your users using email. Using email. We will do this with Firebase. First thing first, you would have to go ahead and create a Firebase project. It is really straightforward. It's as easy as signing up and creating a project. And then once you're, once you're done with creating the project, you will basically see all the products that Firebase provides. Once you are done with creating a product, project, you will see all the products that Superbase provide, authentication, storage, edge function, real, real time, and a whole lot more. But if you come down here, you will see that the most important thing for you is the is to copy your project URL and, and the Anion key. The Anion key just ensure that you have other persons who have access to your project or your Firebase, your, your Flutterflow console will have access to your project. So what we'll do, we'll copy the project URL and come back to our settings and enable authentication. Then it's going to ask you what type you will say Superbase. Don't choose Firebase because you're not using Firebase right now. Then for our entry level page, you would say sign in. Logged in page, you would say our home page. I just have two page in here. And then once we're done with that, we'll go all the way. You come back all the way to our Superbase here, integration right there, and just enable Superbase. This is where you will paste your URL right there. And then you will come back to your to your table and copy the key. This is where you would paste the key right there. So be very careful. Be very careful with exposing your key. If if anybody have access to this API URL and have access to the key, the person might be able to tamper with your project. So be very careful. So the next thing you want to do is to just click on the get scammer. There is no table in there, so it's fine. You don't have to uh, worry about this. And then once you're done with that, you can see most of the bugs are gone, right? Most of the bugs are gone. And once you're good with that, you would come back here to your project, click on authentication, say explore authentication. Yeah, once, you, once you're here, you would see that nobody has created an email. Email, phone number, provider, created by, no one has created anything. We'll come back here and say provider and click on enable. Yeah, just enable the email provider and leave the rest, you know, and say safe. The reason why you're saving is because the confirmed email, the secure email, you can do all of that with Flutterflow. I mean, confirm email, secure email, secure password change, you can do all of that with Flutterflow and you don't have to um, worry about that anymore. And same thing, you can do the same for phone, Apple, is Azure, Facebook, all of this. You just have to provide the details that you're asked to provide. And then here we have the user table. By that time, you would want to create two user table because on this particular table where you have the email, this table is restricted to Superbase. You will likely not have access to this table. So you want to go ahead and create another user table where you will have things like profile images. Um, yeah, you just have things like profile images, phone number, um, any, anything you want to add to that particular table, you can do so. But we can securely log into our application with this table alone. So we'll come back here and we'll click on our, our, our screen and then we, we want to add this, we want to add an action to this getting started. Click on getting started, add an action, delete the action chain, and click on add an action. And this is gonna be super base authentication. And so we want to log in first, that's what we want to do. The up provider is email, and the feed is gonna be the email address, and the password is going to be the password feed. And then once they're done with Otin, we want to redirect them to the home page like so, and we're done. Then click on the sign up, click here, click right there and say open. So we want to we want to just type super base. That's what you want to do. We want to create an account. And for the email, the password is right there. For the confirmed password, everything is right there. So you will have some, you will see something here. It will say note that this action does not create a user role. It does not create the user role in the Superbase table at all. It only authenticates the user and does not create a user role. 
though you would see the details of that particular user but you need to create another table for that user to be stored and then we have an error here the password confirm has to be two different feeds so what we'll do is that we'll just click on this and duplicate this platform du duplicate it and just call it two yeah just call it two let's go over here and password create one password create two and that's it and then once we're done we would navigate to the home page and that's the way it is that's what you would do and all these action provider google all this can be deleted we really don't have use for any of this it can be deleted can be deleted for this other page we can delete all of this so we really don't have use for any of that let's see what's there widget primary button test does not exist okay this is it okay i think we are, we are good now so we can go ahead and preview our project and see how it works so i'm going to preview it on test mode so we have our application and the first thing we want to do we want to sign up so i'm just going to sign up paul at gmail.com password sign up so now you can see we have signed up successfully as the owner of the application if we come back to our alt, alt provider you would basically see that particular user here as you can see we have the poll we have the email we have the account created we have the user id so that's how you would sign into your superbase application that's how you would use superbase as your alt provider why you can use firebase as anything else it just works very well go ahead and try this let me know what you think and don't forget there are some useful links below that you can use if you want to learn about flutterflow or you want to build a flutterflow project i'll see you in the next tutorial thank you